These guys, I tell you, boy, these guys. <laughs> Yes, we so, are live and welcome everybody to Mariel Talks Pop. I'm your host, Mariel Besori, and I have two amazing guests tonight. I have Chris and I have Daniel from Boys and Girls United. How are you guys? Thank you so Good much man. for being here. Hey, oh, thank, thank you, you for, for having, having us. us. Thank you for having us. It's an honor. Yeah, we're very it's, excited. It, this is amazing. I mean, I've been trying to reach you for the past weeks, but it's been crazy and now it's finally happening. I had the girls of um, I-5 last week, and uh, they said that you toured together. Yes. Yeah, yeah. we yes. had a lot of good times. So it was fun. Mm -hmm. Was yeah, that the so Nickelodeon they... tour, I think? Yeah, it was the Nickelodeon all that tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. it was. We toured. Fun group. Uh, very talented. Yeah. Yes, and they all say, oh, if you're going to have them as guests, please say hi for, for us. And well, now it's your turn. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> that's well, sweet. Hi, hi. hi. We love you. Yeah. So um, now, um, first tell us, Daniel, you told me you're in Los Angeles. Where are you, Chris? Um, I just recently moved to Sacramento in February, but I was living in Dallas for about three years. Oh, okay. And where are you guys originally from? <sighs> that's 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 a that's a loaded <laughs> question for me. I am um, Chris. I'm no, Chris. Go ahead. I'm, no, originally, I'm originally from a small town outside of Orlando. It's called Cocoa, Florida. Uh, some folks uh, don't understand Cocoa, so they understand Cocoa Beach. Uh, okay. It's a small town uh, at the very, very uh, close out of the East Coast. Okay, and you, Chris? So I'm originally from New York. I was born in the Bronx. Um, I lived in upstate New York till I was eight, and then I moved to Orlando when I was nine. Lived there till I was 23. Then moved to Atlanta, and then I lived in Houston, then I lived in Dallas, and then here. Oh, <laughs> you're a big traveler. <laughs> yeah, they call me the yeah. gypsy of the family, so I'm like, yeah, <laughs> why not? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so now everything began for Boys and Girls United in Orlando, so you that's where uh, the group was formed? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, originally it was formed with this one guy, his name was Lou. Um, it started off with a guy, um, and I eventually met Rena through um, Transcontinental Records because she was working front desk, and you know she was working with uh, Backstreet Boys and Sync and all that. And um, the guy that put us kind of together, Doug Brown, he introduced me to her. Her and I got very very close, and then we ended up kicking that guy out because we didn't feel like he had the look. And oh. we were, yeah, we were, we were pretty ruthless like that. So we were, we wanted to make sure that we had the proper look for the group. Okay. Um, and then there was another member that was there. His name was Randy. Then we kicked him out. And then we ended up finding um, Daniel and Robbie. And they had the look and they were permanent. So. Oh, okay. And so you guys auditioned for a record label or, or how was that all put together, Daniel? Well, when when they found me, I had to actually. They were very ruthless. I did have to audition. Um, they made me uh, put on my favorite pair of socks, my lucky uh, pants, and I really had to sing everything that I had to try to make that group. Uh, but um, I auditioned for the group first um, before I even had a chance to audition for the record label. So I think it was really just a, a matter of fitting in with the group. Um, okay. I think the age different. The age was a, a real important thing, plus the look. Um, so uh, when I interviewed against these guys, I interviewed against them. I think some of those guys could really sing, uh, but actually they were probably too old. Um, so some of them had some great talent, but they just weren't the right fit. It was just my time. Yes. Oh, okay. But after I auditioned uh, for the group and made the group, <clears throat> we pretty much already had the record deal already pretty much preset. But yeah, I just had to make the group. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that you was guys pretty were easy all, though. You had the, you had oh, the talent. So you so. you were all singers, uh, or uh, tried to audition for another group before. Um. So with my story, I was friends with um, Howie DeRo from Backstreet Boys and Joey Fatone for a very long time. Like Backstreet Boys mm -hmm. before they were even Backstreet Boys, and had like two other members besides okay. Brian and Nick. Um. So it was kind of like that close knit um, circle that I had with getting to know how transcontinental was coming up and about, especially with the pop music. 
So I ended up meeting Donna Wright um, and I actually auditioned for Solid Harmony at the time. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But it ended up that I sang in the office of Transcon, didn't think that I got, that I got it, which I mean, I really wanted to be in that group because I thought it was a great group. But um, that's when I met Doug Brown and then he, um, he was like, oh, I have this idea for a boy and band or boy and girl brand. Um, would you be interested? And I was like, oh yeah, that sounds totally different from what's on the market so far. So why not? So that's, that's how it happened. Oh, that's a fun fact for you, you uh, that you auditioned for Solid Harmony. Those are one of my favorite groups. I mean, wow. they're amazing. <laughs> yes. Now nah, me yeah. on the other end, I never, I've never auditioned. This, this group was the first uh, endeavor of auditioning for any type of musical artistry. I had never in, uh, interviewed or rather, uh, you know, auditioned for any type of group. Um, I grew up singing in the church uh, with my family and local friends. So, um, yeah, it was, you know, it was perfect. But no, that was my first, my first ever, first ever encounter. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, how was the recording of the album? I mean, this is a great album. Did you guys choose the songs? I know that you, Daniel, and Robbie uh, wrote Dance With Me, which happens to be my second favorite song from the album. Uh, so yeah. um, uh, how was the selection of the songs? Tell us about it. Well, we, we recorded a lot of songs. I'll let Chris um, you know, uh, piggyback after I'm done, too. But we recorded a lot of songs, I believe. It was about 100, 150 songs, Chris. It was it was over 100 oh, wow. songs. We recorded a lot wow. of songs that we we we... You know, that's what you do. You know, you go through and you, you, you record a lot of songs. You see which songs are got the right chemistry, which one's going to have the right appeal based off the market uh, and what's going to be hits. Um, and we record a lot of songs recording. Um, there were some great days and there were some bad days. We just weren't doing it. But, you know, we know it's a business and we were just making sure that we can, uh, you know, really get our voices mended and uh, really put out a good product so that our fans will be able to appreciate the music. Um, but we recorded a lot of songs and out of a hundred and some songs, we only chose, I think it was 17 songs. So is that 17 well, on the top? Yeah. This version I have has 12 plus two oh, remixes. Yeah. Plus two, two remixes. remixes. Yeah. So, so out yes. of a hundred and hundred and something songs, we only chose 12. That just showed you how crucial it was. There were a lot of songs that we thought would be on that album that actually were not selected for that album. Um, but we all had a hand in actually putting our um, our chemistry on the actual music, the songs, and uh, and actually getting a little bit of writing credit as well. Um, so I'll let Chris oh, take over. And, she... <laughs> and, and who chose uh, "Messed Around" as a single? Did you guys have any opinion on that, or was it the label? I just took Chris. Oh, I think she's frozen. Oh, she's frozen. <laughs> Yes, you got a oh, good coming back. Right, there she is. I don't know there if it's my, is it my end that keeps going in and out? Yeah, yeah. yes, it's you. It's so weird. Yeah. Sorry. Look, so look, oh. if you want to ask there your question again. again. Uh-oh. There she I'm not goes quite again. Sure. <laughs> She's freezing. Uh, Messed Around was um, a song that was written by JC uh, in sync. Um, yes. I believe he, he and Alex G had uh, written the song. Uh, and they were kind of trying to figure out what to do with it. Uh, and it was just a wonderful song that fit us. Uh, we did actually collaborate. Um, so it was more of a, a mixture between uh, him and the actual record label, uh, trying to see if it would be a good fit for us and our chemistry. Um, but it was, and we did have a little bit of input, but ultimately it was a song that he had <coughs> um, written. And uh, it just so happened to be a really, really great song fit just for us. Um, so not only that song, but he also wrote, an wrote another song as well. But Messed Around um, yes, was a song that we all can't came stop to love. You. Yeah, we all mm -hmm. came to love both of those songs, but um, uh, we all love Messed Around because Messed Around also told a story for for some of us too. You know, you're going through different situations, relationships, and you feel messed around. So it was very relevant to us. Um, so we were able to uh, really connect to that song. And uh, I think it was a great selection to make it a single. Yes, mm -hmm. I believe it's actually like the standout song from the album. Not that the others aren't, but this one has like this hit potential. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and what about the video? I mean, it's a really fun video. I was watching it uh, a, a few 
moments ago just to remember it. And it's really fun that you guys were in different scenarios. You, Daniel, had like the worst scenario. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? Like, I was like, wow, the day game is, is gonna... far worse. <laughs> yeah. This is far you worse. Know, I just figured it was going to be a beautiful girl around the corner. She was just going to be ready for me. And I like, woo. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a great concept. We had a lot of fun with that. I mean, I mean, we really, really enjoyed making that video. And that's we shot that video, Chris, in LA. We yeah, shot we it should. in Los Angeles. We shot it in Los Angeles. Uh, and we had a real good time. We uh, I know Robbie loved driving that Viper, uh, that Dodge Viper that had just came out, and uh, we just had a great time. I remember the fire department was there and they were watering down the entire scene uh with the water hose all over the ground and we we're splashing the water, playing, kicking. We had a really great time. I mean, that was a really, really fun video to really record. Um, what about you, Chris? What do you what, what do you think about the video? Um, yeah. I I felt like it was kind of kind of surreal because all that time and all those years trying to get to a point and seeing the fruition of everything coming together with, you know, the perfect members and finally kind of our time to shine and in our exploration of um, mm -hmm. just being out there. It, it was it was just a surreal experience. It was a lot of fun. Um, I enjoyed the day. I, I really remember that day because um, they were like, oh, when they came to the scene, they were like, oh, do something. And I threw the phone, but I actually threw the phone and I think I broke it. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, I'm really feeling my character. Um, yeah. But it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was, yeah. And then really uh, uh, the extras were really cool, too. So the guy that, you know, was dancing and stuff like that, he was he was quite the yeah. character. Really yeah. good people. Yeah, it's a really fun video. It's like so early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the dance moves and their outfits and my hair. Yes. I, don't even, I don't even know what to think about my hair. I had no... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it worked. That was a, yeah, it was, it, it was a long photo shoot. I mean, not photo shoot, it was a long video. It was a long, we were there for hours shooting um, that video, I think a couple of days, but um, it was, everyone was, it was all of our first experience, but uh, like, like Chris was saying, the, the reality of the group had really uh, come together and it really had taken form and uh, became a reality. So um, it was remarkable for her, for sure, being in the group. Because her and Arena were in the group, you know, way longer than me and Robbie. So for them, it was like movement. This is this is for sure true movement. And uh, I guess that can be definitely a surreal moment for her. But for, for me, it was like, wow, uh, is this going to be on TV? Like, wow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. This is really happening. Like, just, you know, I was playing football just a year ago, you know. Wow, I'm about to be on a music video. This is crazy, you know. So... It was a wild experience for all of us, and uh, we had a great time shooting that video. And, uh, and then, I'm glad a lot of people liked it. Yes, actually, we have here people watching us live, and uh, they say um, okay. we have uh, Maurice Jenkins. He says, "Hi, Chris. How are you?" Hi, Maurice. Um, and we have Crystal, who is actually a big fan of you guys. She says she met you. And uh, Tanya says, hi, Chris and Daniel. I was a huge fan of BNG. You both look great. Hope you reunite with Rina and Robbie. Any upcoming news? That would be awesome to see you guys having a, mm -hmm. a small reunion or a comeback. Have you ever considered that doing a BNG uh, 2021 20, comeback? <laughs> I mean, well. I have. I have thought about it, especially, you know, with all the other pop groups and stuff with uh, O-Town and everybody and LFO yes. and all that. But you know, I, I speak for myself. I would totally do it. Um, I can't really speak for Rena or Robbie. Um, yeah. I, would I guess it. we would have to we would have to, to see and find out, you know, yeah. I mean, I think anything is possible. All right, back on. Yeah, I, I would do it too. I mean, I, I mean, who wouldn't want to relive that moment, relive that fun, um, being able to have an opportunity to pass your artistry and music back out to your fans, because um, uh, music never stops, music never dies. Even though we're not, you know, together banded, but we've never really stopped, you know, our artistry of music. You know, that's going to be in us to the day we die. Um, but I would be, you know, I would definitely be up for the actual situation if we were to get it back to do it. I mean, we all have our own lives now. We all have our, you know, own personal journeys. We have our businesses and we things that we do. Um, but there's still, 
not enough to keep you away from the music. I think the music will still, you know, it should be able to still draw you. It would draw me back in. I would be, um, I'll be all in. I'll be yeah, all in. We'd love to uh, see you guys. We'd love to. I mean, if the girls from I5 say that they would love to get back together. Who says that there can be some kind of a uh, y, Y2K tour with well, you right. guys and I'm down for that. <laughs> other, yeah. other groups that were very popular back then too. I mean, yeah, they're great to see you. There were, we, we've toured with a lot of people. I know I5, um, I mean, Black. I mean, there's a lot of people we've toured with uh, that are, um, you know, either no longer performing, you know, or they're just paused out right now. But, you know, that would be a great idea, you know, huge. That would be huge, too. Yeah, you see, yeah, yeah I, I mean, if, if anybody had the idea and they have a, the proper connections and all that to come together, for sure. That would be great. I would love to live there in U.S. so I can put it together for you. But here in Mexico, it's going to be know, right? so difficult. <laughs> but, well, you never know. You do a virtual. Happen. There's virtual, right? That's the new yeah. thing. Everything's yes. virtual. Everything's yeah. virtual. And, and now, please tell me something. Who chose a name for the group? And hmm. why is it so complicated? Because uh, some people like, why they added the Z's and the N, and who chose the name? <laughs> that, wow. Um, <laughs> I remember we went through a lot of lists of what mm -hmm. to be called because the only guy and girl group that was out that I think around that time was Steps. If there I'm not steps. mistaken, an eight and eighteens was coming out as well. Eighteen right? and S Club Seven. S Club Seven. Right. Yeah. Oh, S Club Seven, yes. S, S Club Seven. Club so, seven yeah. yeah. You know, I think we didn't want anything so obvious, but it ended up being obvious. Um, the United became adjacent to boys and girls. I don't think did we pick the name? I don't think we I mean it was there, but I don't think we actually picked it, right? I think if it, we yeah. settled for boys and girls, right? But then I think something something else was called boys and girls. So they add the united and we're like, huh? Yeah. But it it was kind of like yeah. this weird funky thing about it. But <laughs> I mean we grew to love it, especially when the it's it was like B and G. That that was yeah. good. That was but, it. I um, think that's what we chose. We actually went for B and G, um, and mm -hmm. it's super We love the B and G method, you know, ultimately over everything. But then I, I think because what she was saying, someone else had it similar, and it's like we had to put play uh, place United in there, and it's like, well, hmm, okay, we'll see. <laughs> but hey, we'll make it work. We'll make yeah, it work. But we'll make we, it work. We, we'll make it work. You know, we're, we're in this to make music. You know, that name is mm -hmm. not gonna make it. But you know, we we were all in and. Um, yeah, but we, I remember we went, we did go through a lot of different names and uh, uh, the management would, you know, say, how are you guys thinking about this? And we would choose from this and then they would take it back and say, no, okay, what about this? And we finally got it right. But then United was, was thrown in there, but we were still known as B&G. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, because it's a little difficult sometimes to find stuff from you guys if you don't know how to write it correctly as yeah. how it was yeah. displayed. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah, sometimes it's really difficult for those yeah. who are not like so much into this. Right, yeah, right. they want to be, they want to be a little bit edgy or a little bit different and not have the traditional S on the boys and the traditional S on the girls. So they just wanted to jazz it up a little bit and they want the Z's. I think there was somebody else. Was it Boys Town? There was something else. So they didn't want to separate. There was someone else that was kind of close to the S's when the boys or girls they they snatched those S's off and put Z's on there. I guess maybe like Spice Girls, Backstreet Boys. Spice Girls, yeah. So I guess that's where fun. maybe they probably blended it. They're like girl, boys, bam, you know. Yeah, yes. Yeah. The, the obvious, but it, it worked. Yeah. It worked. I think United was a good concept too because it, we were actually, if you if you look at our group, you know, we're from all from different walks of life. You know, we all have different nationalities, and uh, it was more of uh, all these different cultures uh, of talented yes. people coming together as one. And we were, you know, we were united. So that was also a, a you know, a, a theme too. But it actually worked great because, you know, we were able to blend and um you couldn't tell us you can tell us that there was a difference between us, but man, we were yes. we were really united. Definitely, definitely. Maybe because you, Chris, if I'm not mistaken, you have some Latina blood in you. Oh yeah, um I'm a New Rican. New Rican. So <laughs> oh. not from the <laughs> islands, right? So I'm from New York. That's all uh -huh. I know. I'm a New Yorker, so I've been okay. to Puerto Rico one time. Um, my grandparents and stuff. 
migrated to uh, New York, and like I said, I went to Puerto Rico one time. So, New York, okay. from the but, Bronx. Yeah. But your last name is Ruiz, which is really popular in the Latin community. I mean, over here we have like a thousand. <laughs> I know, I know. It's it's very worldwide spread, but I think the what the descendant was probably from Spain. I, I still want to do the 23 and me, but then I'm like, mm, government conspiracy is probably not. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and now, uh, was there ever a, a plan to release a second single? Because I know there are singles out there in eBay that I have found that mm -hmm. are, um, that's what you get was like, the second choice for single or that was like just a promo or what uh were, were there ever plans for a second single no that was yeah. actually the second single right but we didn't well we didn't get a chance to do the video and stuff we just yeah. ended but i do remember mm -hmm. when we broke up that i decided to look on ebay or something at that time and somebody like we we did the the photo shoot for the new single and I remember seeing the single cover and I was like, I've never seen that picture before in my life. And I want to say it was for That's What You Get, but then I want to say it was Dance With Me too, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it was That's I What You Get. I think I think they just still pushed the button and released it even though we were uh, disbanding, but it was still pushed out there. But yeah, that was the second single that was going to be selected. There was a, it was going to be a tight race between that and Dance With Me, but I think, um, uh, executive decided to go um, with um, that's what you get, which we love that song. I love that song, you yeah, know. Uh, so we had we had been preparing for it and prepping for it, um, but some type of way it was still still pressed. Um, but yes, we didn't actually do the video for it, but it was the next single. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a shame! We would have loved to see another video, probably the follow up to the messed around. <laughs> oh yeah, Quick we were pretty ready for it. Dun, dun, continuation. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, if you, but if you saw us live, you were able to see that's what you get because we performed that's what you get um, uh, quite a bit uh, on tour or where we went, uh, and it had a lot of feedback. So that's why it was going to be the next um, single. But it was a very popular song, and um, uh, I, we, I love performing it. It was a very very strong song. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there aren't many videos of you guys performing on YouTube. I mean, there's only like two when you guys were on these. I don't know how, how is it, what's the name? But you guys perform with PYT, Britney Spears, Vita, Vitamin C, I don't know. Summer Music oh, Mania. Summer uh, Music a, Mania. Summer yes. Music, my, I think it's by L'Oreal. Yeah, L'Oreal Summer Music. Yeah, I, th I think that's that iHeartRadio show now. That's, you know, yeah. it's developed it's into that, yeah. So that. We, yeah, I saw some stuff on YouTube that was that and then something in uh, Paducah, Kentucky that we did. Um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some show like that. And then we saw like, well, I saw like a kid dancing to our stuff, which was nice. Yeah. But yeah, there's there's not a lot, which I'm surprised because we did so many shows across the country. So yeah. I'm yes. sure that there's many fans. And if there's fans on here now, we would love to see that. You know, yeah. that would be a lot of fun I, to, uh, to relive. I would say that, yeah, I would say there's probably a lot of footage within the fans that really have a lot of footage mm -hmm. that we don't have. That if they do, you know, we would we would, you know, we would love, love to see fans. your footage. We would challenge you to release that mm -hmm. footage, um, you know, so that we can all, you know, sit back and remember and reminisce about it. Um, there are some items that we do have, um, you know, collected as a group that we're going to be putting together soon to actually um, put out in the airwaves and uh, allow our fans to still see some of the behind the scenes footage of um, some of the footage that we do have. Um, and uh, me and Chris, we were just talking about trying to get in contact with some of our other executives from the record label and uh, as far as the rest of the band members to actually get some more content to actually release it because I think everyone deserves to see, you know, the full thread of Boys and Girls United. Yes, we'd love to see some more. And actually, I, ha I have here Crystal, who is a huge fan of you, like I told you. Crystal. And, I and she... I remember, how's it going, Crystal? Uh... <laughs> And she and her sister, who I think it's a twin, Christine, uh, they are uh, constantly texting me and they sent me some photos of you performing. I don't know if. Okay. We're like, really, I would love to, love to see it. You love should send it. them, Crystal. Yeah, you should send them because uh, yeah, send those them. are like no, no popular photos. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. And then, and too, if she does have them, she can upload them to. Um, you can upload them to Google. That way, they're always stationed. That way, you know, more people can see them because we would love to see them. Uh, even if we see them on your page, wherever we can see them, we would love to see them. 
uh, any other fans out there that have any BNG uh, material or footage or photos, we challenge you to, you know, it, you know, to post it, to post it wherever, especially to Google or uh, wherever it can be noticed and seen. Please do. And if you have videos too, uh, yeah. upload them to yeah. YouTube so we can That's see more of YouTube. your your performances. And what was that your favorite awesome. songs to perform, uh, Daniel? What was your favorite song to perform? Uh, wow, that's a good one. I would always, uh, hmm, man, I will. I always love this. You know, I can't stop loving you was one of my favorites too. Uh, it was one of our um, show kickoffs, and uh, we would start out with that song, and um, uh, it was just, it was energetic. Um, you know, it, it was the introduction got our blood pumping. Um, so I love that song a lot too. I mean, I loved the fact of uh, what it meant, what it stood for, and um, you know, I just loved the. It was just always the first breakout song. And I used to always get a thrill with that. It was the first thing. It was a song that always pulled my butterflies away. So as soon as the music would start, and that boom, that beat kicks in, boom, I was ready to go. But I, I just love that song. <laughs> and what about yeah. you, Chris? Um, I would definitely agree with. Um, I can't stop loving you. Uh, there was something about that song. Uh, and I do, I also like Dance With Me. It wasn't my favorite song, but I have to say the choreography was a lot of fun. So when we would be on stage, that would be our time to like mess with each other. Like, you know, we're dancing and then we're like making little faces. So that was our yeah. kind of like time to let loose a little bit. So, but uh, yeah, definitely I Can't Stop Loving You and Dance With Me would be the yeah. The theatrical your favorites <laughs> and, and your favorite songs from the album are those in particular or others huh. oh, wow so those those <laughs> that's one of our that's one of my favorite songs to, that uh, we we perform but if you're talking about a favorite song on the album favorite songs there are so many i, I really loved our album i really believe it was be, uh, before it's time um i loved um i love i love lifetime i definitely love lifetime I love beautiful you. Beautiful you to me was one of the first, one of the first times I was able to really hear all of us um, uh, angelically sound blended together. And I, was, I remember the day we were in the studio, the first time we actually were able to hear the song played back to us in the studio, and they and they played it. And I can tell you that there was not one dry eye in the studio. It, it just did something to us. It just messed us up. We were all emotional. I remember Marina, oh. it just it hit her first. And it was like a domino effect. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah. it, was yeah. like, it was over. That song was, it, 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 it captured, it was uh, it's a beautiful song. And I mean, that's one of my ultimate songs. And um, I wish we had performed it more because to me, that was one of my favorite songs was Beautiful You. Beautiful You um, can mean so much to uh, to it means different. It means a lot to different people. You know, everyone grasps their own concept of that song because it touches you in a different way. But yes. that song, "Light of Love" and "Lifetime," were my top three. Yeah. Someone says here uh, that uh, "Lifetime" is their favorite. Imani, yeah. yes, Imani says, and also someone here mentioned "Beautiful You," and it actually happens to be my favorite too. So yes. yeah, it's a it's an nice. amazing song. It's. It actually yeah. is like very related to the to the theme to the lyrics. I mean, it's it's a beautiful song. It's beautiful you. So yeah, it's yeah. It what honors you, the title. What about you, Chris? <laughs> wow. I mean, I would definitely have to say wow, that's hard, man. <laughs> beautiful <laughs> you. I mean, I could go down the list, and I think that like all of them were were like top notch. <laughs> Um, but if I really have to pick, I yeah, beautiful you. And then I would say, lost. There was something about lost I really enjoyed. And we, what happened one was that it was recorded differently, the way mm -hmm. that it's presented now, and it was off the chain. But something happened with the mechanics of the board or something, and it wiped the whole thing out. So then we out. had to redo it. So mm -hmm. it had definitely had a different vibe, but there's something about Lost that I really was like, hmm, this could be something. So yeah. it's a great yeah. song. <laughs> Actually, yeah. all um, of them are. And and you guys have a cover here. Uh, it's always. Oh, always. I, yeah. I can't always. remember. Always. Who sings the original version? I can't uh, remember. Atlantic Star. Atlantic Star. Atlantic Star. 
but you guys did a great job too. I actually like your version better. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we we, that was a great, that was a really awesome experience too. We worked with a uh, fight run um, and yeah. he really brought yeah. a lot of stuff out of us vocally. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And he worked a lot with NSYNC and Backstreet yeah. and, and all of them. Yeah, that was, was it was a tough change. I'm sorry, oh, go ahead. sorry, I just uh, I interrupted you. <laughs> oh no, no, you're fine. I was saying it was a um, that was a that was a tough song because when you're you're, you're gonna um, come behind an original, uh, you know you want to give it everything you got because you know you, you're learning. You don't mess with a you know you don't retouch a song that's already done. It's a classic. If you're not gonna bring 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 your A game, so um, that was a mm -hmm. it was a very challenge. It was a challenge for us, but we were able to. Um, find the chemistry for it and uh our, our voices just blend so harm you know it was just so perfect so i mean we both we all love the song and i believe that song probably would have ended up being a single as well um mm -hmm. if that advanced past that's what you get i believe always would have been chosen for a single um oh, really? there was oh yeah it was a lot of hype behind the uh the song always it was gonna be plus, uh, lifted plus Plus, Johnny really liked it, our manager at the time, Johnny Wright. He was the one that suggested to do it, and that was one of his favorite songs for whatever reason. But I'm sure yeah. it was something more personal. But, yeah. yeah. We, we did a couple of – in our recordings, we did a couple of um, a couple of um, covers. Like, I know we did the song Radio, too, the song Radio. Um, <laughs> we did that with Radio? Dexter Redding. With Dexter Redding. It was a song called Radio. Uh, the one from Donna uh, Summer? <laughs> it was kind of close. I don't remember, but Otis Redding's son, uh, Dexter Redding, is a producer. And we recorded the song with him. It's called Radio. Um, but it was an actual uh, remake as well. Very, very unorthodox, very a different type of song, but um, it was pretty cool recording it. It was so unorthodox that Chris is still trying to figure out. I don't know. We, we recorded oh, so yeah. many songs. <laughs> we recorded so many songs. She's forgot that one. <laughs> I totally did. Now, now it's like yeah. coming back to me, but I still don't remember radio. I re was, I remember no. recording um, "Here Comes the Rain," the Annie Lennox mm -hmm. song. But Annie Lennox, was, yeah. Uh, yeah. Here oh, comes the rain, the rain again. again. Yeah, I don't know what yeah. happened to that one, but I thought that, that would song. Been cool. That song was later covered by Will of Ford. I don't know if you guys remember. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I want to be back. Her. Yes, yeah, that was <laughs> the <good>. one. <laughs> she recorded yeah. that song uh, for her debut album. Yeah. So that's well, just wow. Go. <laughs> just goes to show you when you're, when you're trying to make the right songs, the right comments, you will record a lot. Like I said, we recorded over a hundred something songs, and we what we some of the songs that we thought would make the album did not make the album. So, oh. you know, that's just, and that's the music. Do you happen to have those songs? I mean, I, I bet all of us would love to hear them, those unreleased okay. songs. I wish we did. It's, it's in the hands of the actual record label. They have all of our original recordings um, and the producers, because they own all, the, whoever owned the masters or, or for that music, uh, they have those recordings. Um, we can see about trying to get them because we can see, but, you know, but normally, no, we don't have them. They have all those oh. um Mm -hmm. Recording would be great to have to, to listen to those video. unreleased. Yes. Oh yes, oh yeah, that will be it. Chris is still mm -hmm. trying to remember the song radio. We're gonna, we're gonna I can't remember. I really can't. I'm just we're like figure it out. Do you remember Dexter? Dexter Redding? No, I remember now. Yeah, I remember. I remember the studio and I remember the room, and then I remember him, and then I can't remember the song. Yeah. So this is where we're at. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's right. On top of that, um. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, wonderful! Uh, you're about to say about touring? Uh, yes. Uh, how was the tour? Uh, you toured all over the U.S., or did you ever visit uh, other countries like Canada or or just the U.S.? How was the tour? Oh yeah, oh yeah, we toured yeah. Canada, we toured, uh, all over the um, all over Europe, Europe. Um, United States, mm -hmm. or uh, Europe too. Oh, yeah, Europe. Yeah, yeah we um, we did the we were on the. Yeah, yeah, but in sync, no strings attached tour, and then also um, Britney's. Oops, I did it again. Tour was it? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's when she oops, first went to Europe. Yeah, her oops, yeah. I did it again. World tour. Uh -huh. That was that was insane. That was. I mean, we went from we went from Britney's first tour, doing kind of like the carnivals and you know Fairgrounds. things because they didn't really know who Britney was, 
and um, that's when Aaron Carter, I think, came in. And um, so we did like a lot of low shows, right? But, you know, it was fun because we got to interact with the people. But when it really got to like Europe, it was like, I can't believe all this is happening because it, it happened at a rapid rate. And then it also happened, it was like Groundhog Day every day. So people are like, oh, what'd you think of Paris? I don't remember. I remember like I got a croissant and I think we left and I think we slept, <laughs> you know, so things like that. I'm like, yeah, yeah. and I remember from... we did Portugal. Portugal was fun though. I remember that we did a lottery yeah. show and we wow. did a show with the Venga Boys. The Venga wow. Boys. Mm -hmm. yeah, we were awesome. uh, all in Leipzig, Germany and going from the fairgrounds uh, with Britney's first tour, um, and from House of Blues to now you're doing Wimbledon, and you're mm -hmm. in, and you're you're in Manchester, and you're doing um, uh, is it the, is it the O2 the famous O2, or the is O2 it H2? Arena, yeah. the O2 no, Arena? The O2 Arena, yeah, O2. the O2, and now you're at you're, you're at the O2, and you're opening, uh, you know, mm -hmm. for the major headlining. So it was it was very surreal for us. I mean, but uh, we went everywhere: Amsterdam, Holland, Norway, Sweden. Mm -hmm. That tour wow. went through, oh yeah, Barcelona. We went a lot of places on that European tour. Um, and uh, our name definitely was out. And I'll tell you one thing was really, really weird. And it was our experience. And I know it was weird for me, but it was my first time being overseas. And we were like, you know, we were all young, 17, 18, 19. Uh, you know, we're very young. So I remember we were in Leipzig, Germany, and we were on stage and um, never had been there before. And we were performing um i believe messed around and there were a lot of a lot of fans in the audience singing the song and we were so thrown off we're like wow they're already singing the song they know the song this is cool and we had a meet and greet after the show and this is the first time we encountered this it was you know we laughed about it but it was very different for us and we were at the actual table signing autographs and things like that and I remember this one group of uh, fans that came up and they were singing every song word for word. When they got to that table and we started talking to them, they didn't know one bit of English, but they knew every, <laughs> they English, knew the word, every <laughs> English word of the song. And we, we all looked at each other like, did I say something weird? Like, what happened? Like, why are you just singing all those songs? And like, we just, you know, completely didn't understand, but it was very, very um, surreal moment, but it was very fun. We had a great time overseas, but that was my eye-opening experience fun. about how fans will adapt your music. Even if they don't know your language, they know that music and music just, you know, it takes, you know, it takes people to a different area, mm -hmm. but they were able to understand and know the language of our songs, but not know how to really speak our language, which is very wow. impressive. That's yeah. awesome. I didn't know you guys went to Europe. I mean, those that kind of information is not on, on, inter, on the oh. internet, so it should be. Oh. It should yeah, be. we gotta oh. update that. And we got yes. to that. We we wore Europe out. We were we were all mm -hmm. over Europe. We wore it out. And mm -hmm. too bad you didn't visit Mexico because uh, NSYNC was huge here. I mean, they yeah. toured here like a couple of times, and uh, I thought that you guys were the opening act. But now that you told me that you weren't in Mexico, it's really sad. <laughs> yeah, they switched it up a lot. I mean, I'm sure we would have done it if the mm -hmm. the gift how had been bestowed on us for sure. But um, yeah. I think we I maybe think we're in the process of doing the other album or trying to get that going because we did yeah. stop touring for a second. Yeah. That's my following question. What happened? Why was there a second album? If you guys were doing so good, what happened? That's a good question. And it was, it was, there was nothing. <laughs> there the was a loaded gun question. <laughs> a loaded gun. The loaded gun. So there was nothing, there was nothing really internally wrong with our group we didn't have anything that we we all loved each other there was nothing uh chemistry wise i think it had um a lot to do with the the the, the longevity of the group because like i said chris and arena had been in the group way before me and robbie came along i think like what three or four years chris yeah you got yeah. already been together formed already but just hadn't had the right to um links to make the group feel complete as chemistry but um, as we started to move and you know, progress through um, success, um, I think it just became a toll of, uh, you know, wear and tear and, you know, traveling and homesick or a lot of different things played around. But ultimately, um, like Chris would say, it was uh, our, our, our oldest Rena <clears throat> was the one that did not want to stay in the group uh, any longer. And it was just because of 
personal reasons and family reasons and um and that was mainly with the main situation but it's mainly I, I, it definitely took us aback because we didn't even feel anything yeah. like that coming so mm -hmm. um it was all a shock to us and it, it definitely was a shock to me because it uh, you know it, I figured I would have been kind of the first to know, not saying mm -hmm. that, you know, it wasn't relevant for the group, but, you know, being that we were together for a very long time, I thought I would have known something, but I was just as shocked as everybody else was. And yeah. It was I a remember weird day, we, that day. I remember, <laughs> I, remember, I remember we had just finished our last concert in Europe on the uh, Britney Spears, oops, I did it again, world tour and we were uh discussing with our manager about our, our plan two of plans to push out the next album uh, we we're going to get ready to start back going to the states and start recording we we're going to take a couple of months off and we we're going to get back at it and um we all left and went back home you know we hadn't spoke to each other for a while and all of a sudden we had a phone call and then that phone call just took everybody by surprise and that's when it took me chris and robbie by surprise that you know, we felt like she just she didn't want to be in the group thus far. I was, you know, different reasons why. I know she, I know she had fallen madly in love. Well, who is actually her husband her today? Husband. Yeah, she okay. actually married. Yeah, she married her mm -hmm. her crush, and he they are married with three beautiful kids right now. Mm -hmm. But I know her husband at the time uh, was in a, a a boy band as well. My and town. Uh, my town. Um, oh, okay, now they're so, the script. Yeah, the, the script now she fell in love with her prince charming and you know she she just wanted to come off the road she wanted to be in love and i believe she wanted to be um whatever else she wanted to be because she had been with the group way longer than we had so you know fame wasn't it wasn't important to her like that it was about you know she loved the music but at the same time i think she wanted something different at that moment so mm -hmm. that's what caused the trickle down that was the main situation and uh yeah. chris will take it from there because after that that was like Chris's soul sister. Without Reno, I don't know. I don't know if we can do this. Well, Daniel and I were speaking earlier, and you know, mm -hmm. I was kind of thinking about it. Um, if if that if we were to do a rewind on it, like at that time, I was just like, man, I'm shocked. I'm like, oh, okay, then we'll just break up because I can't see me moving on. Because I mean, she's like my sister, like my family, and then I felt kind of like mind blown that she dropped this bomb and I didn't know. And it was just like the shuffle in my head. But if I had to do it all over again, I love Rena to death, but I would have found a replacement. <laughs> like, you know, thinking about it now, oh my God damn, why did we look for another person? Like, why did I just abruptly be like, okay. I was stop, about to know? ask you that. Why uh, did you ever consider do uh, uh, audition? other girls or or not but now that you tell me you know <laughs> and looking at these groups in europe for example maybe like like a solid harmony or a honeys or yes. you know they pop people in and out like nobody's business i'm like well, like that could have been good that could have been us you know why why didn't i pull that trigger <sighs> was i too emotional at that time Would i didn't feel like i was but i guess i was that i didn't really Mm -hmm. I did not know that that would just be it, right? And then you work all that time to get to a certain point, and then that's it. And then you're like, you're thinking that you can rule the world and rock the world, and then your whole life has changed, right? Because then there were no calls after that. There were no tours. There was nothing. The people that we worked with, everybody vanished. It was just this, it was Dust. surreal. It was crazy. <laughs> Like Crazy. if you do, I mean, I can understand why people in in the entertainment industry kind of go south because it's like, for whatever whatever reason, when they leave the industry, there's so much that goes on in the industry. You feel invincible. You you are this person. You're right there, and then all of a sudden it dwindles away. So yeah, if you were to tell me, hey, bye, I would have filled the space. <laughs> I should have filled yeah. the space. I'm not saying that my life is not great now, but I'm just. What the hell was I thinking? Like, really, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Um, and then also with management as well, I think that, um, I think we were also caught up in the period of time when Britney and NSYNC were so popular that we felt like we weren't getting enough attention. Mm -hmm. But really, who cares? We were like, <laughs> we bitch about it so what? Screw it, we're on the same roster, right? 
And you know um, what? Uh, uh, other uh, like we were mentioning 18s and S Club Seven and Steps. Uh, they were part from uh, Great, Great Great Britain and Sweden. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. um, the U.S. didn't have uh, boys and girls group, and you could have taken that place. But like S Club Seven was so big in in the U.K., you could have been like the American uh, S Club Seven or 18s or whatever you want to call them. Uh, I mean, I think I think we kind of stood apart from what the other groups were because I mean, Steps has a very they have the lengthy uh, career right now. They're still doing stuff, right? Yes. Um, they were initially just pop, pop all the way, which I love. Don't get me wrong, but I think what we were was just trying to separate the pop into soul, like the R and B, and you know, just kind of mix it and and switch it up so that, you know, everybody would have a little something that it wasn't just primarily pop. But mm -hmm. we were also speaking earlier about, you know, we wanted also to have the opportunity of which we didn't get a chance to, but I think that was going to happen maybe for the second album to work with like a Max Martin or a Dennis Pop, um, you know, before like he passed, I think, I forgot what year he passed, but, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, would have done another cluster of things. So, I mean, yeah. We, 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 we believe that if we had done the second album, it would have been, uh, we would be more than, we would be a household name. If you didn't know us, we would definitely be a household name. A lot of people, uh, we, we did become household names for a lot of people, but we, we knew we would have made the, uh, the threshold of where we wanted our success level to be if the next album, because we were there with all the major um, acts. Uh, we, we all we had the same manager. We were in the same spotlight. We were exposed to the right crowds. It was just a matter of time, and the the buzz was already pretty much hot for Boys and Girls United. Uh, the good thing about us that you know we weren't studio voices. We could sing. Everybody uh, in the group yes. could sing. You know, we were all individualized um, singers. We could actually you know uh, lead a song individually. Normal groups, mm -hmm. you know, there's maybe one person that can lead, and that's it. But you know, we were. That's why we were just so different, unique. We had different flavors mixed together to be united. Um, but we were all individual recipes. <clears throat> and uh, we knew, I think we definitely knew that that next album would have would have definitely um, uh, sent B and G into the, a different atmosphere. Um, but to be quite honest, after Chris, you know, when she felt like, you know, if Rena couldn't move on, she would actually leave. Uh, the management did. We did try to actually re, re, re out replace the girls we didn't try to replace Zarina, but when chris left they were gonna definitely try to replace um the girls but um and they did do an audition they did do an audition at universal studios and they uh, selected people and there was a lot of girls that came um to try to uh you know be replacements for boys and girls united but ultimately the record label it wasn't the same chemistry uh it wasn't going to be the same management concluded that it wasn't going to be the same as well and um, the people that they chose, they thought they were going to choose, um, was shot down. And it just didn't feel right. So it didn't mm -hmm. go anywhere. And like Chris says, you know, when you go from, you know, uh, playing football or dancing or singing one week uh, at home, and the next week you're on tour with Brittany doing fairgrounds, the next week, the next year you're doing in sync, uh, you know, no strings attached tour. And then the next year, you're doing the Britney Spears Oops I Did Again World Tour overseas, and then next year you're doing the uh, uh, NSYNC Tour again. You're doing football f football stadiums, and you're just exposed to all of this just like that. And um, a small decision, everything's wiped away, and you look around, and nobody that was next to you was there anymore. It's like a different atmosphere. So I can, like Chris, I can piggyback and say I can see how a lot of people, if they don't have a higher power in there, a higher power in their life, how you can just go depressed, you know, because you lose, uh, you lose, I call it the fast life because everything happens in the, in the, in the world of, um, entertainment. You see a lot, you develop a lot, you make a lot of money. Uh, mm -hmm. we have people throwing boxes of clothes that are just to wear the clothes for free advertisement, mm -hmm. you know, you get all this you, free, you know, free hey, too. Yeah, it's great. Here, Tommy Hill figure. Here's Fubu. Hey, this is uh, Fila. Wear this. This is advertisement. It's all yours. Five boxes, of clothes. boxes of clothes, you know, and all that's gone. So you have to be able to bounce back. You got to have a strong uh, mental. So because, you know, it happens to a lot. But for us, you know, I think we could have um, expelled and became a lot bigger. Um, but we would just we just, I think we kind of figured that it would be there. You know, even if the group didn't be something, we would still be there. The industry would still be there. 
like Chris said, if I can go back now, that phone call would have went a little bit different. I wouldn't have been just, you know, just listening. I would have started to you know, speak a little more about, you know, you know, well, what about this and what about that? And mm -hmm. at that moment, we were all being supportive for her because we understood, but we didn't really understand the magnitude of that conversation. And we right. really didn't understand. <laughs> we really didn't really understand when we had that conversation that it's over. That was it. Yeah, that was it. We didn't really understand. We just figured out, okay, she's she's wants to be in the group right now. Maybe it's something going on, or we may replace her. That's the kind mm -hmm. of ideas we thought. But mm -hmm. really, you couldn't really replace Rena. You couldn't really replace Chris, and you couldn't replace mm -hmm. Daniel or Robbie because we are the main ingredients that made Boys and Girls United. And yes. uh, they tried, but those ingredients wouldn't fit. Just like when they had the other people in the group, those guys didn't fit because they hadn't met me and Robbie yet. And it just wasn't mm -hmm. the right chemistry. So it's the mm -hmm. same. It's like Humpty Dumpty. You couldn't put them back together again if you tried. <laughs> well, things happen for a reason. And like I like we talked before, you can still make it again. Like here, Tanya oh, says, yeah. you guys need to get a label on your new management. You're so talented. I yeah. stream your music. I would too, definitely. I mean, if you guys were back together, who knows? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Hey, uh, you never know. Yeah, there's some, <laughs> solo, some solo offers out there too, some deals, but we would definitely, I would be all over mm -hmm. BNG. I would yeah. be all over BNG. And, and now that you talk about being solo, I know Robbie auditioned for American mm -hmm. Idol. And did mm -hmm. you guys audition for something else like Pop Stars, the show, or American Idol, or X Factor? No, you never no. tried it solo? I never even thought about doing it because I think I've seen so many, uh, you know, seen the years of cattle calls and I was in acting before that. So it was kind of like, right. I was just exhausted, you know, at that point to be like, oh. that's really, I mean, it's, yeah. it's an opportunity. Don't get me wrong, but it's really starting from scratch. That's like, really like, oof, that's a lot of, uh, uh, stress. And I think at that certain time and in those specific shows, they always look for something. You know, they're mm -hmm. always looking for the next Taylor Swift or they're looking for the next Justin Timberlake. And I think Robbie would have fit that part, you know, perfectly if he was pop at that time in American Idol. And I think, mm -hmm. I mean, I found out accidentally that he was in American Idol because when we disbanded, we really, honestly, we didn't even keep in contact for many years. I mean, mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, I mean, it's only until recently Daniel and I like <laughs> really kind of paired up again, and now we're yeah. living in the same state, so we're getting a little bit closer. Um, <laughs> Rena, I I speak to on occasion. She's busy, you know, with her her kids and stuff. And Robbie, I mean, I can't even remember the last time I spoke to him. Um, mm, but um, no, I didn't. I personally didn't. I try to do the solo thing. Um, but it just, it really didn't click. I mean, recently I just did a, a track about three years ago and you can find that on iTunes. I would shamelessly plug, I would say, Hey, I'd make money off of this, but I'm not really making any money. But if you would like to hear some of my new stuff, <laughs> it's under like, evolution, Chris. So like it um, in. Like it it's in. A, I have like two singles on there and one's called, uh, I've lost I'm blank, but it's all there. It's called Evolution Chris on iTunes and Android. Evolution Chris, okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, no, I, never I, don't knock for, I don't knock anybody for trying those shows. I think that's a really good opportunity. And if you mm -hmm. have the balls to do it, go for it, you know? Okay. And what about you, Daniel? Ever tried uh, to no, go no, solo? I, um, uh, well, when I was going to look into a, a situation uh, with a record label called DreamWorks, um, there was not going to be enough money on the budget for the actual, um, for the deal. So, uh, my background was, I was going to decide to go to school and, um, I had a long talk with our former manager and he was like, you know, the industry's not going anywhere, you know? And I was really, you know, we all had just came out of high school, you know, we, we really, that's all we really had. That's the education that we had. And, um, kind of was very scary. Not. Yeah. Very scary to go from living this this high class life, and then now you're dropped back down, and you have to resort to your high school diploma when you know your, your group is over. So, mm -hmm. I um I uh I talked with my manager, and he was like, you know, if you want to, you know, go to college or go to school and get a plan B behind you, you know, industry's not going anywhere. You know, it'll be here when you come back. If you decide to come back, you want to do something solo or different, it'll be here. And I kind of you know uh, took that. And uh, I ran and buried myself into education. I went and uh, went to college, and uh, 
and then um but at that moment you know when we when it was considered over and uh we went through such a transitional spell um i was so buried away from the industry i i wasn't i, I wanted nothing to do with it because i had i you know you you feel you felt everything you went through and you did uh day in day out 13 hour photo shoots and you put in the time to really get to the level you want to be at and then at a moment's time it was like okay that portion is over now what are you going to do next and we were all like okay what are we going to do next like what are we going to do next so mm -hmm. at that moment i wanted to finish something else behind me before i would develop and you know back into the music industry because it is a show business and you got to make sure you take care of your business and the show mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and um so at that moment i wasn't looking for any reality shows or any um american idols and like Chris, I found out by accident too. I didn't know he was going to enter American Idol. But like I say, everyone has, we had our own individual what to do next situations. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. for Robbie, for Robbie, it was okay, I'm going to just stick with the industry while, you know, while it's hot right now. And he decided to do that show. And we watched it every week. I watched it. I called him and talked to him and, you know, and we we'll talked a little bit about it. But I watched him and uh, it was very weird to see him very weird to see him doing the show and to see him with the long hair because you mm -hmm. know that was, <laughs> that wasn't a robbery that we knew but he you know he was being himself you know outside of whatever but um but no never interested me i had a lot of people would always ask why don't you go on those shows why don't you do this why don't you do that but it just wasn't my um my makeup anymore and what mm -hmm. is it that you guys do now what do you do for a living well, oh, okay. Um, so I'm in politics. She's a politician. Okay. She's a politician. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm the next AOC now. Um, but I, I worked on uh, the Hillary campaign for some years, and then I worked for the human rights campaign for four years. Okay. And um, they're the largest LGBTQ um, organization in Washington. So mm -hmm. kind of took a break from that. Um, and that's where I moved from Texas to California, to Sacramento to start, you know, something mm -hmm. fresh over here as well. And then I'm getting back into acting too. So it should be yeah. fun. I'm like, I'm in California. Why not? Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, so Daniel? I, so I went, to, I went to school and uh, acquired my education uh, in criminal justice. And, you know, I got involved into law enforcement. Oh which was always my first love before um, I even thought about the group. You know, I've been a, been a cop and robbers fan since I was yay high, you know, wearing, you know, anything with anything to do with cops. So I went on back to school and uh, to pursue my degree in, in criminal justice and, uh, and worked my way up into the law enforcement field, all the way up to the federal government level for the uh, uh, Department of Justice. Um, but I broke away from that because um, even though I still am doing that, I um, became an entrepreneur along the way, and I developed a couple of different businesses that um, uh, that I now own and operate. With you know, so I uh, own a uh, successful uh, credit consulting company. I also own as a CEO as a uh, transporting uh, service company as well, okay. um, and also a couple other more endeavors um, uh, as far as real estate and different other things that I'm now you know CEO. So. I'm trying to live both lives. I'm, I'm balancing and leveraging and, uh, you know, but life is good. I can tell you life is good. Um, but we've all just, you know, taken our own steps and went to our own fields. Um, but, you know, that's what we do now. So <laughs> even though we have a lot going on and we love what we do and we make a lot of good money, mm -hmm. we will still run back to the music because yeah, it's, just, totally. it's just us. It's never going to escape you. You can try to put it to the side and put it down for a while, but it never escapes you. It's a part of your makeup. It's a part of your it's DNA. Part of you. Yes. Yeah, it's when you're an artist, you're you're always an artist. You know, you may take a break, yeah. you may go to the side a little bit, but you'll always have that craving within you somewhere. Mm -hmm. And would you sing something from B and G for yeah. us fans? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> because you're saying it's in your blood. It's part of you. So here fans are telling us uh, if you would still sing something for us. <laughs> what? Oh, man. It's, 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 I don't it's, even know it's, what it's, it's, it's real late over here. And like, you know, the, the, the light oh, is going yeah. down over here. For some reason, the camera's fading, you know? It's like fading. I don't know what happened. Um, 
I think if you have a call some better night or we have been <clears throat> or we, we can always do a some, part B and then we can do it for your show. <laughs> Maybe if it we can get the great energy, to, right? it, it would be great to have like this um, acoustic uh, digital show or something. Yeah. Hey, maybe one of the fans can like do guitar or, you know, they have the acoustic yeah. guitar or something like yes. include it. Yeah. Something like that. I don't that play any nice. instruments, but if you want background vocals, I can help you with that. Okay. Yeah, you know, you know. <laughs> work no. it, work it. Go back. <laughs> yeah. um, so, but no, you, know, you never know. <laughs> I tell you what, part B will be ready. We'll be ready. Okay. Yeah. So, and we hope to get uh, Rina and Robbie. It would be great to see you guys all together. It would be <coughs> amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, possibilities are endless, and you know, yeah. I will see. Uh, I mean, we, we got to put in the footwork and, and knock on their door for a little bit, <laughs> but yeah, I'm I sure we can know. get it together. Yeah, I don't. I, think I, 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 I mean, we do. We'll let you know for sure. Please yeah. do. I mean, I would be thrilled to have you. And and oh, here says uh, T. Paris says, "Come on, do it." Yeah, I know. I want them to do it too, but they're they're a little shy. What do you say? What, what do you say? Who? What do you say? Oh, T. Paris. T. Paris. Yes. Oh, T. Paris. Oh, that's my cousin. Oh. <laughs> oh okay. Yeah. It's family here. <laughs> Family's on there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what I mean. I mean, Cute we can do this. We can make them sing the chorus of "Mess Around." It, it was a. Uh, You've been living in a fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, that, man, now we have to do it. Uh, <laughs> too bad. Okay. Well, you we know, can do it. we can do that. I don't know if we'll be in harmony, but I could do yeah. it. You want to do it? I don't know. What was that? Um, You've been living in a fantasy. In a fantasy. If you think that you could be with me, you tried, you tried denied, denied, and now you got, now to, you move got to move on. on baby. Took a chance Took when a you chance rolled, when the rolled the dice. Messed around, but you didn't think twice. Think twice. What's done What's is done. done. Is I, done. Want I want you out of my out of life. life. I don't know. That's it. That's it. That's what we wanted hey. to hear. It's yeah, we'll 21 do it. years. Mean, yeah, well, we still got a real blow now. You know, we'll do it. But now, we'll just, now we'll get to the nitty gritty. We're like, oh, oh. yeah. It, next time, you should add the choreography. It was like super. Hey, hey man. Oh, man, I might break a hip <laughs> if I did the choreography. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it goes. Oh, I, I like you know. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, man, do I remember that choreography? I'm like, I remember this. Oh man. But then I'm like, do I do? Was that the first choreography we learned, or was that it the was second one. choreography? That was so you know, mess around had two different dance routines. So you know, you oh, okay. you had to learn yeah. one. You had to scrap it and learn the other one. And we were on the road on the tour trying to learn the second one. Like, oh my gosh, we're mm -hmm. performing this tonight. And you just had to be able to get it just like that. You know, that eight count, that was a serious, that was some serious pressure back in the day. Eight count is nothing, nothing to play with. Especially, I know I had well, my time. I, Chris had her time with the eight count. I sure had my time with the eight count. Ooh, well, because yeah, Ro Rena and Robbie were dancers, right? So they're like, yeah, they were dancers. Two, three and four. And I'm yeah. like, what? <laughs> what beat? I'm like, Huh. Yeah. I don't know. So for a while, me and Chris had to find our, our two left feet and our two right yeah. feet, but we finally were able to find them and put them together. But Robbie and Chris had it together from the, from, the, from day one, but um, very, very fun, that choreography. But but yeah, I think uh, maybe hopefully one day that will come come to fruition, that that uh, that reunion tour with a lot of different um, acts. That will be something to see. That will be we, something yeah, to I see. Mean, if you hear somebody putting it together, we are we are down for that. You know, maybe I, mean, I can convince. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember Lindsay Pagano. She was part of the 2001. She had this theme called um, "Everything You Are." All I need is everything you are. Uh, she was uh, bubblegum yeah. pop, and uh, bubble there was nobody's. Pop. Yeah, nobody's angel. I, I I'm sure you remember oh, that. Oh, nobody's angel. I remember nobody's, nobody's angel. angel. Yes. I interviewed I uh, Ali about two months ago, and she said that she will be also down for a reunion with the other girls. And there's I five. Um, mm -hmm. That you never know. I mean, it could be hey, a you, huge tour. You <laughs> might start. You might start an, uh, a pandemic between the uh, the pop groups. I mean, I think it's just a matter of finding that right manager and stuff that wants to put things together, you know. And we're down to listen. I mean, yeah, when, whoever's well, yeah. going to put that together. I mean, you're the one that's building the idea, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait, I love you. 
there's a lot of different, you know, old school music. And there's a lot of R&B groups that now tour that are, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, so why not? Why is why is the pop culture not doing it? Because all the other other genres are doing it, gospel from gospel to R and B to rap, to they're all doing it. You know, one thing music never dies. So if the music never dies. Guess what? Your fans never die. So, mm -hmm. um, but I think pop is like the only culture that does kind of like pull away. And when it's done, it's done. They don't really go back on the road. But you look at all these other groups. I mean. They, they're still pushing and kicking. Even if they've broken up two or three times, they're still back out pushing. Look at New Edition. They've been ripped, mm -hmm. put back together, mm -hmm. ripped, still pushing, still touring. The OJs, I mean, you just name it. There's a lot of groups still going forward. Look at, I mean, I think the Backstreet Boys are really one, the only ones that I can really think of that are really, really pushing the bill. And like Steps, like you said, of course, are. Mm -hmm. um, of course, NSYNC is no longer, um, you know, yeah. touring, of course, just Justin. But, but I, um, it, it was O-Town. O Town are still together. Right. O Town still um, together. Okay. Uh, well, uh, LFO, like unfortunately. LFO, yeah. Uh -huh. Two, two oh, of yeah. the guys from LFO Ooh. passed away, but uh, mm -hmm. Brad Fischetti, yeah. I think he's still working, uh, doing. Yeah, you know, to remember, to remember yeah. his. Uh, we tour. We press. tour with the LFO. Yeah, we toured with LFO too for a long while. We toured with them as well. We toured on their on their tour. We toured with them. Great guys. Oh, they were great guys. Awesome. Yeah, we toured with LFO. Yeah, we toured with LFO for about a good couple of months, uh, and we did. As a matter of fact, it was a club tour. We were like from it was different mm -hmm. types of clubs, different places every other night. But yeah, we toured with them for about three months. Uh, um, they were great they, together. It's a shame two uh, of them passed away. I mean, so sad. Yeah, so young. Was, oh gosh, Devin yeah, and so Rich. talented. Uh, so talented. Oh, yeah. Those guys are so talented. And yes. as well with the girls from, uh, is it black? How you spell it? Black? Uh, yeah, black. Yes. Uh, black. Yeah, black. Yeah, black. Natina, Natina, I don't know if it, I'm spelling it correctly, uh, yeah, passed Natina. away. Natina uh, Reed. Mm -hmm. a few yeah, very years. good yeah. friends of ours. Very good friends of ours. We also had the same manager and we all uh, housed together. We all toured together too on the uh, Britney's, on Britney's first tour. Uh, so we, we, we know them very, very well. We, you know, we know them very well. We've, we, uh, you know, mm -hmm. club together, slept together in like the same bunks. We were like in boot camp together. And we've also had to do shows oh. together. So, you know, they're, um, they're special to us. And, um, so yeah, she, she, great. She's still greatly missed. She was a great friend of ours. Um, and, so. uh, I think it's been about eight, nine years now. Yes, it's years. so sad. The way she passed away was so sad. I'm too bad. Yeah, yeah, that's still kind yeah. of like a an ongoing mystery, from what I hear. Um, yeah, yeah, tragic enough as it is. Um, but her son is doing things, which I found out. Um, his name is Trent, mm -hmm. and yeah. I think he, I think he has an Instagram page as well. But he's he's doing some pretty good things himself. I think he's in a group uh, mm -hmm. with three three young kids. I don't know what they're called exactly, but he's doing stuff. So it's kind of nice to see yeah. that uh, her influence yeah. and also her his father's influence has you know mm. paved the yeah. way for him into getting into the game. So really you, proud of him. You then toured with a lot of other artists. I mean, PYT. Yeah. You guys remember PYT? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've been PYT. trying to get in contact with them. But they're hard to get. Um, um, I actually have Lauren Mayhew's. I probably could get a touch with Lauren Mayhew because uh, like, I've known I <laughs> I knew Lauren Mayhew when she was like a kid auditioning for stuff like I was actually helping one time and I'm, my dad was a casting director and I remember she was so young and then years mm -hmm. later I saw her I was like oh my gosh that's nuts that you're in a pop group but I love them they were great that was a yes. cute little yes. song too yeah very so, great I like that so yeah so and, and how was britney with you guys uh, did you guys get to interact with her or oh yeah like we, we, yeah i mean yeah we had a lot of fun i mean it, it wasn't i mean for me it wasn't a lot of one-on-ones there was a couple of times we had one-on-ones but like yeah she was around acting goofy you know being her awesome self um she's just really down to earth like mm -hmm. i can't speak bad about britney at all like no britney was person. the uh yeah she was britney so we knew britney as being britney you know you guys knew her as britney spears but we just knew her we knew her as britney yeah. but uh having the same manager and you know sharing the same studio space and sharing the same you know i mean you know 
<laughs> she she really hit stardom with us at the same time. You know, she when she first had that single one, it, it, it no one expected it to blow as well as big as it did. So when it mm-hmm. when the single shot through the roof, it snatched all the singles off the uh, shelves and put put the album out. And mm-hmm. that's why she sold so many because in order to get the um, song, you had to buy the whole album, and it was just a great story. So we were on her first tour, and it just. She just blew just like that. But so we were just commenting on her as Brittany. You know, she was coming our way up, but very down to earth, humble, um, would ask a lot of questions. You know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And um, so she definitely earned her her spotlight. She didn't just get it by chance. She was a hard worker, very dedicated mm-hmm. and um, put everything into her shows for sure. So we learned a lot from working side by side with Brittany uh, and uh, allowed, uh, be allowed to be in her space. Um, but yeah, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome because sometimes uh, y- you get like this impression that some artists may be like really like I don't know. I don't want to talk to you, or some of them are like super cool, and you didn't expect that. So that's great to know about about Britney. I don't think I've uh, ever had a bad interaction with anybody uh, that we've kind of went on tour with or wow. came about. I can't really speak of that. I mean, no. I wouldn't speak bad to anybody anyway. I think that's bad karma. Plus, that would no. probably be a, like a pop book we don't want to talk about, you know? Be like, yeah. But yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we, we were blessed yeah. to be around a lot. Of, and then being around uh, them, we were also exposed to, you know, huge, you know, other icons that we came in contact with. Like, you know, the night we uh, we were at the, uh, I think it was the No, no, no I think it was, uh, I think it was a Britney Spears Platinum Party in New York. And we met a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, music icons um, mm-hmm. at that actually particular Janet. party. Then I met Janet Jackson, and uh, we were able to share some space with her and communicate with her and talk to her about how the tour life was and how you know uh, demanding and stressful it was. And uh, we met a lot of different people, but you know, no, we didn't, we didn't really run across too many people that were very arrogant that weren't able to be you know uh, themselves. I think when you're in the atmosphere when it's just artists. Uh, Everyone never. Some sometimes, of course, I didn't have my guard up because I'm around people that are just like me that can understand this. You know what we go through day in day out. So I didn't really, really come across too many celebrities that you know uh, were very nasty or had bad attitudes. Um, so we were very fortunate. Great. Very fortunate. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you guys so much for doing this. I really appreciate it from oh, the bottom yeah. of my heart. No, I never, welcome. I never no. expected uh, for Chris to answer me back. And uh, no, when she no. said, I can actually get Daniel to, to, to do this, I was like, oh, my God. And I actually sent you an emoji with this guy going down because I wasn't <laughs> actually believing it. And uh, fans were like crazy. Like, you guys, you are actually interviewing them. And please ask them yeah. this and that. And uh, it's really yeah. been fun. And thank you. Thank you so much. For oh, no, this. thank you. I mean, we've always I mean, yeah. we've always been down for our fans since day one. And I think to uh, revisit this and um, be in the presence of Bro. people that love us as much as we love them. You know, I mean, we like I said, would love to do this again if we get the other members. And if not, if you need us, we are down for another chat at any time. Yeah, I would love that. And uh, if I ever get the chance to do something with other groups, it would be great to have you guys. Yeah, keep us in mind. I'm down for that. I'm really down for that. Totally, totally. I mean, it's 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 gonna happen. I promise. I mean, look at this. I mean, you didn't think that I would answer, but I mean, I think that's crazy because I think I'm a nice person. But um, (laughs) but, because you never know. You started something, and I think that's great for you as being, you know, the interviewer and starting your own podcast, you know, putting your foot forward and actually talking to these people and getting the responses and look what you're doing. You're putting people that haven't seen each other in years, and this is exciting, and we love it. And, I mean, I could see you really going a long way with this, so we'll just be a part of your your presence and, you know, everything that you've done here for us. Thank you. It's been fun. (laughs) It's been phenomenal. We've enjoyed sharing our memories. Of course, we have a lot more. So yeah, we you know, have a lot more. <laughs> bring us back for Plan B. We we'll, we should have all four. That way, you can get more content out of us. Uh, but for sure, um, it was a it's been a wonderful experience. I mean, we're we're both uh, grateful for the opportunity um, just to be able to just to you know hear and see our fans. You know, so that's mm-hmm. something that's something very very uh, dear to us. We've always been about the music and always about the fans. Um, so that never left us. I tell my daughters all the time. You know. You know, um, you know, if you have a chance, you're blessed to have some fans. You want to make sure you can take care of them, and you know, just you know, there's nothing like having a fan. 
and because we're all fans, I'm fan to a lot of different things, you know, but we're all fans mm -hmm. to the one thing that puts, that puts us all together and that's music. So, um, yes. that's, that's awesome. And you're doing that and you're bringing it through the music and, um, no one should not respond to you because what you're doing is very important and, um, mm -hmm. you're trailblazing right now. So I think, mm -hmm. you know, I wish you much success in everything you're going to do with this podcast. And, uh, I think the best is still yet to come. Oh, thank you so much guys. And mm -hmm. like I've Welcome. told my other guests, um, I, I had a lot of bullying when I was growing up and music was like my haven and your album, like the other artists album was part of that, um, for me to help to go through all this along. And now I'm a different person right now. And your music is part of that healing. So thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank I mean, you. that's amazing I, I what music can do. I have, <laughs> well, I, have, I have a question for you. So when when you when did you meet Boys and Girls? I know you didn't physically see us perform, but when 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 was it? When did you meet us uh, musically? When was it? Do you remember? Or uh, how did yes. you come about? How did you come about getting the CD? Or uh, what what happened? I'm 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 interested to know. Yes, totally. Uh, I remember it was 2004 because that's when I met my best friend, who is from Brazil. We met through the internet. So uh, now he lives here in Mexico, but we met through the through the internet, and we were sharing music. And he said, mm -hmm. uh, "Do you know Boys and Girls United?" And I'm like, "No." So he sent me your song "Messed Around," and I loved it. And I started searching more from you guys, and I found your songs like mm -hmm. illegally. I'm sorry to say that, but um, <laughs> oh, Nap it was a Napster. Did you get a virus? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't recall it was Napster, but uh, I I have your, all your songs. Showing my age, no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's how I got those songs. But then uh, years later, uh, I found this and I ordered it. So now it's it's an official copy. It's not a uh, it's not illegal. <laughs> so that's that's how I got it, and that's how I got into your music. And um, I well, uh, I would yeah. say if you need it signed, you could send it to I was, us. I was yeah, going to say if you send that. I was going to say, if you send that to Chris, she'll sign it. She'll send it to me. I'll sign it. We'll send it back to you signed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, really? I, I think I yes. might have, like, I might have some like pictures that I could dig some up. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. You'd be honored. Yeah. But that's, oh. story. that's, that's, that's awesome. That's Please an awesome. That's a, that's yes. a wonderful testimony. I was wondering because uh, that's, that's, that's just goes to show you music never dies because 2004, you know, we already had been broken up for some years, but the music still lasts, you know, even mm -hmm. today. The music still people, lasts. Yes, and, uh, and then sometimes they tell me, I mean, those groups didn't make it here in Mexico. Why are you listening to them? And then why shouldn't I? I mean, music is universal. And mm -hmm. um, I, like I told you, you guys were there for me, your music, and were wow. in those really tough moments of my life. And then I move over and I'm a different person now, but your music was there. Wow. And that's why I'm doing this to tell you how much I appreciate you guys being there when I needed it the most. Wow. Well, thank what's, you. What's, I think thank you so wow. much. What mm -hmm. all the music, or what was, what's your favorite song? What's the number one song that really, like, really helped change resonated. your life or resonated? Oh, yeah. Um, actually beautiful you, and it's my favorite song and it was actually part of my, playlist with my husband uh for us to sing at our wedding it was uh, for us wow. to sing, for us to dance at our wedding we were like if sh shall we dance to this song we, we were really oh. uh, hesitating but it was part of our selection <laughs> wow I love the first it. dance wow that's awesome that's awesome yes. that's so sweet we oh. ended up dancing this mariachi song but um yes it, beautiful yeah. you was part of the selection <laughs> Oh, that's uh, awesome. That's awesome. That's well, I'm so glad awesome. we were able to be there for you. Yeah, musically, thank you. For sure. mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, hey, we're here for you now. <laughs> and, and and I, I, hope, gotcha. I hope to meet you guys one day, like personally. Sure, sure. We can all meet somewhere. We're, we're in California. Me and Chris yeah. are right here in California. Mm -hmm. So we're like what, a couple hours apart. She's in Sacramento and I'm in Los Angeles. And uh, we would we'd be honored to see you and, and uh, meet you. And, no, um, that would be great. Yeah. You never know for the Y2K concert you're going to put together. You know, I, I hope. Uh, and, uh, oh, here, I, have my, <laughs> I have my friend Mauricio here who says, yeah, I had the chance to meet boys and girls through Mariel and I love the album. Yes. So I, 
because of my oh, Instagram account, sometimes I recommend music and that's uh, wow. how oh, thank, thank you. you. So that was very thank sweet. You. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Who wrote that? Well, thank you. And and thanks everybody that's been watching us live. I mean, I hope you guys have been having fun hearing all your stories and um it's been really great. And like I said before, thank you so much. Let's do this again and yeah. let's put yeah. that uh, Y2K okay. tour someday. <laughs> that's right. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Ready. We're here. You okay. <laughs> so I wish you all the best. Right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Really appreciate so it. Much. Thank you for everything that you're doing and much success to your future endeavors. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, Daniel. I hope you guys enjoy Bye. this interview. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. We appreciate you. Good job, guys. Peace. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. We out. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.